so we continue analyzing. This time we'll see a Catalan opening. White opens the game with d4. Black plays d5. We have this move order, he can also play c4. We are probably transposing. Here when, when we play e3, we'll probably play the Catalan variation. We have to continue with c4. The natural move order would be c4, knight f6, and then we play e3. And we have the Catalan. So e3, knight f6, uh, bishop e2. And we can still play c4. In fact, there is no way to stop c4 unless he plays b5, but he's not likely to play this move. He plays with c5, and this reminds me of uh, the Tarash variation of uh, the Queen's Gambit. We have this, we get this position after this move order, let us say black plays knight f6, he plays uh, the queen's gambit, the client, and then he plays with c5. The purpose of the Tarish is to uh, trade pieces off in the center, and black tries playing with an isolated pawn. He'll have some weaknesses in the center. On the other hand, he'll have some attacking chances too. So we have to be careful against uh, these lines. Let's see uh, the move order used in the game. So, yeah, e3, knight f6. Here he plays with c5, we castle, and we have to play with c4. We have to punish that center. It also makes a lot of sense because we can try queen a4 and if he takes on c4 our bishop e2 is going to be much better. He takes and well if he plays bishop e7 which is a solid move then we can take and here we have the isolated pawn we were talking about. I like this uh, for white from that positional point of view. I, I like, I enjoy playing against the isolated and of course we call this uh, d5 isolated because this pawn can only be protected by other pieces. It cannot be protected by pawns and we have a lot of ways of uh, putting pressure on d5. I also imagine we play bishop e5 here. And if we trade pieces and we play an endgame, uh, we probably have a clear advantage. Of course, um, that is the main line and we have to know some theory too. But um, black plays and d takes c4 and this is a sharp line because he's opening bishop's e2 diagonal and as white we know we have a stronger development. Here white decides to play queen a4. We have a lot of moves here. Knight a3 is possible. We also have d takes c5, knight to e5. Some uh, moves are gambits here. I like queen a4. I think this is simple and clear. He decides to play bishop d7 and that is a natural response to. I'm not a big fan of taking on d4. If he keeps on taking pawns he won't have any development and as you can see here we have the simple tactic knight takes d4, queen takes, yeah otherwise he loses the knight on c6, 
bishop takes. He has to play bishop d7. And here we have rook d1. Basically in this position we have two variations for black. We have the queen sacrifice. Queen takes d1. And feels like black has uh, some compensation but as white we have the queen. We can just play something like f3 and we stop this bishop. Our material advantage uh, should give us um, yeah, a clear advantage in my opinion. And if he plays bishop takes c6 we're gonna trade a lot of pieces off. But the problem is once we take on c4 his pawn structure is too weak and we have a risk-free advantage as white because our pawn structure is it is much much better than blacks so um, that is why I don't like taking on d4 I prefer bishop d7 queen takes and here black takes the chance of trading more pieces and I, I feel if he plays carefully he'll be able to reach equality we still have some tricks on the queen side we'll always have the chance of uh, putting pressure on b7 maybe a7 and what I like about this is we have a faster development his king is still on e8 so we play knight c3 I'm not afraid of this because if he moves the knight I can play queen d3 at least and if he takes on d4 then I play queen takes so I'm safe. He plays bishop e7. That is um, a solid move. If knight takes, queen takes. This looks uh, playable for black too because he's developing faster. And I still prefer white. We have this threat. We can play bishop e5. Maybe, maybe here um, we can tell black got equality, but if you check the PHN, you'll find this line. You can study this deeply. Here we have a powerful move, which is uh, bishop h6, and suddenly we break his king side. If he takes the bishop, then of course we take on f6, and we have a huge advantage and if this we still have a nice tactic and we win a pawn we can see this um, game quickly after this variation uh, white got a winning position and again you can check the PHN file and you'll find this Bishop e7 looks like the solid move. Now if we take on c6 um, he's happy to trade pieces off. That is why we play rook d1. Putting pressure and we are also offering uh, black the chance of uh, making a mistake. It is not comfortable to have the queen on d8. So here if he moves the queen will win extra tempos. Here for instance he plays queen b6 and I'm not sure about this move because one day we'll play bishop e3 and the pressure continues. If he played queen c7 then we could have or we would play knight b5, bishop f4, maybe queen a5 is the move but still we can play knight b3 there's no 
safe square for black's queen in this position. I think it's between queen c7 or queen a5, I'm not really sure. Um, I know queen b6 is probably the worst square because bishop e3 is at hand. I would consider bishop e3 now. However, white uh, finds a better move order. We can take first and then we play bishop e3. If we play it now, he can he can trade queens off by means of knight takes, queen takes, and then we still have some advantage, but without queens, I feel he can equalize. Here, there is no um, queen takes d4, no bishop c5, and of course, we are happy if he takes on b2. That's uh, what we want to see. Because we have to remember his king is still on e8. So, yeah, queen takes b2 is probably losing. He should play queen a5. Or, well, queen c7, this is... I mean, a7 is hanging in a lot of variations, so... Yeah, it is queen a5. Or maybe queen b4. Yeah, queen b4 loses the a7 pawn too. So queen a5. Queen takes b2, wins a pawn, but with the king on e8, I would I wouldn't even consider this variation. Rook a v1. We keep on winning tempos. This is clear, and he plays queen a3. Now, let's see what happens if he played queen c2. This is better looking. And once we have um, both rooks on the open files, I think it's time for tactics. We play this. If rook takes, then we see his uh, first rank is weak. And we also made him with bishop c5. This uh, wouldn't happen if he had the queen on a3. So this variation is uh, worth considering. If he takes with the pawn, okay, maybe queen takes c6 is not working, but I know I can just play bishop takes a7, and even if he castles, I know I have the advantage because I have a passer on the A file. I think the A2 pawn is uh, stronger than the C6 pawn. And I also know his queen on C2 is out, uh, is misplaced. I can also try trapping this queen. Well, considering the game, queen C2 is probably better than queen A3, because now Bishop takes, um, here black decides to take with the rook, and we know this is losing to queen takes c6. He had to play b takes. Okay, so we don't have the bishop takes a7 we had before. However, since the queen is on a3, we have new possibilities, and we have to act before he castles. If he castles, then he is safe. Therefore, we play knight b5. We are full of targets. And then we play this. Yeah, if rook c7, we have rook b8. And if he moves the rook somewhere else, we have queen takes c6. And again, we stop him from castling. He takes with the rook, and this is too simple. Queen takes c6 happens to be the only move, otherwise we lose a piece. But at the same time, is the best move. Only move and best move. We play this. We'll have a forced variation. Rook takes. Maybe we can take with the other rook too. I, I don't see a big difference. 
maybe we'll have some checks on the seventh rank that is um, the only difference I see and unfortunately for us we don't have bishop c5 mate that would be awesome so rook takes, queen takes, c3 and material is kind of equal difference is made by our pair of rooks which is much better than the queen and we also have the bishop that counts too bishop is much better than knight when we have the open position so we start with a check he plays king d6 if knight d7 we win with rook a8 see he's running out of checks and he won't be able to uh, defend the knight I imagine something like queen e1 then we play this and we just trade everything off even if he had something like queen d5 we play f3 plus bishop f2 and I feel safe uh, these are the variations I imagine when I calculate this he plays king d6 but okay we're gonna trap the king and of course here we don't have to mate him we can just win with bishop d4 once you have more material just trade everything off without his queen he's uh, basically losing and after e3 he gives up we could also take on a7 plus f7 and just in case I would play this because the only counterplay he has is um, the c6 pawn so well for some reason he decided to play e3 check first and black resigns I don't think he'll have time to advance the c6 pawn uh, to create some counterplay if this we can just play this taking the c6 pawn first and if king d5 uh, the king is far away from the action and we simply win I hope uh, this analysis was useful um, and we'll, we'll continue studying the Catalan variation in future videos and of course I also want to see you in my future DVDs thank you hi this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization so sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed once more this is Damien uh, for onlinechesslessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos thank you